I started off with video recording. It didn't start off with photography. So photography wasn't the beginning passion for me. I used I started back in the nineties when you had those big huge VHS cameras, you know, and you yeah. climbing up. I climbed a few active volcanoes and climbing up with a huge VHS, I turned out to be the last one in the group because it would get <laughs> way up, right? But then uh, it was a trip to Yellowstone and it started off, I believe. Uh, 2012. It was our first time in Yellowstone, and we encountered a grizzly bear. I had a little small uh, Canon uh, point-and-shoot camera, and I had another camcorder. And it came to a realization that you have to make a decision what story you want to tell. You want to tell uh, a video story or an image story? And it cost me greatly because I started off with video recording as the Grizzly was going to cross paths with us at a very short distance. But then it came to the point where I wanted to photograph it because something, an instinct of mine, I wanted to capture that moment. I missed the shot when it was directly in front of me, transitioning. And I believe that was the exact moment where I realized what do I really want in that precious moment? what really impacts me. And moving forward there, I realized camera is the way I want to present. See, when, when you're traveling in Timbavati, and I can't really say exactly where, but in Timbavati, um, you're going through a, a whole bunch of shrubs. You're going like, if you're in, obviously safari, that's what it is. And then all of a sudden you came across this male rhino. This was the very first time in my life that I have ever seen a rhino in person. I tell you what, to describe what I felt, you know, you see images, you see it on TV, but when you come across, I don't know, come across it and you see this animal, you know, it, touch, it touches you. It's, uh, it's an unbelievable experience to finally see it in person and look at it and you can hear it breathe. You can hear the steps. You can hear it because it's eating. Those things start adding up. And so the experience becomes something personal. That's what matters. I was just starting to contemplate this huge male rhino when I looked up and I hadn't realized that mere maybe 100 feet away, there was this female with its baby rhino. And when I saw it, it blew me away. The rhino, the male one, was staying at its distance, just keeping guard from other males that could have come and approached the scenario. But when I saw the baby, that was like the icing on the cake. You know, this, this tenderness. You see this love between the mother and child just gracing. It, it just blew me away. So to answer the first question, whereas what do you want to do? You want to take that machine gun shot, the bunch of shutters, da -da 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 or do you want to take a single shot? That all depends on the situation. Here you have a wonderful uh, mom and the, and the baby that were just standing there. And this backdrop, you know, this, all the shrubs, you have marula trees, you have a beautiful back, uh, back scenario. If I recall, it was early in the morning, maybe around eight-ish, so there was a little bit of haze still in the sky and the touch of light still penetrating through the trees with this huge uh, sun coming out created this beautiful light. So there wasn't really a need to go there with a bunch of shutters. So I just went there, I looked at it, and when I just felt it was right, I clicked the shutter. I didn't take too many images of this one. I didn't need to, but it just captured. And when I looked at it, it felt right. I have to be honest, you know. First comes what comes into my eye and what comes in here in my mind. The photo shoot just comes naturally. I don't go there and say, okay, well, I want to do this because what's going to happen is I'm going to take this photograph and it's going to be artificial because I won't feel it. So once I come there and I look at it, the, the clip just comes natural. I mean, you're, you're photo shooting for a while, so there's this. This little muscle right here is already well trained, you know? 
So you just capture it. Never approach a scenario like that and just think technical or what's going to happen because you're going to miss the moment. So the two lenses that I use is the Nikon 300 millimeter f2.8, that VR2. And also the second one is the 70 to 200 f2.8, the VR3, which just came out like earlier last year. So those two lenses in reality is all I really need. I usually take more than one body. That's one thing I definitely do not want to go with. Just one body is not enough because scenarios change. One camera can fail. That happened a lot. I mean, you expect the camera to work. It never fails, but something happens. I don't know, either a card read error, anything. If you don't have a secondary camera, a third camera, you can miss a lot of opportunities. In that scenario where I took this photograph, I had two bodies with me. The first one was a Nikon D7000. That was the very first camera I purchased from Nikon. The second was a full frame camera, which is a Nikon D750. The camera is really great with low light conditions. The full frame allows me also to make sure that what I get, what I expect out of a lens, if it's a 300 millimeter, it'll be a 300 millimeter. And if I need wider angled lenses, I'm gonna go with the full frame. The articulating uh, tilt screen on the back of that D750, at first I thought it was a gimmick. But when you're in safari and sometimes you want to get lower shots or something to work with, it really comes in handy. So with this particular shot, I had the Nikon D750. I had the 300 uh, millimeter lens attached to it, handheld, and that's what I captured it. There was enough light coming through in a beneficial way from the sun hitting uh, the rhino, so there was no need for a flash. So then I just photographed it. Um, and that's what I use for, for this particular image. On these particular lenses, you have the 2.8. I did want to get as much uh, light in without having to use a lot of ISO. If I recall, this was a 1 1,000th 1, uh, of the shutter speed. The ISO, I wanted to keep it low, so I usually go with 250. The uh, f-stop, I had it at f2.8. That's wide open as I was able to do it. So with that three combination, that's how I took this image. If I were to express the importance of Rhino or I want to share Rhino, what better to do it with a mother and its baby? Because it shows motherhood, family tenderness, but it also reflects hope out of the baby, hope for the future especially for an animal, you know, a species that's really being killed off. I mean, they're, they're one of the main targets for their horns.